Hi there, it's Dennis, Victor Echo 3 Bravo Foxtrot here with another DIY um, uh, fun little antenna projects. There's a lot of variations to this one, so I'm going to show you what I did with it, and uh, uh, you can have some fun giving it a try for yourself. Let me show you what I got. It's a random wire or a, a long wire antenna. It's not really random because there are specific lengths uh, that you need to use, and I'm going to pop up a chart here a couple of times, and I'll also link um, uh, a URL to it. So so you can download it for yourself and play around with it. I didn't come up with this chart. I uh, just kind of scoured the web and uh, found it. And I've been playing with it a couple of different lengths. All right, so here's what we've got. We've got 124 foot, six inches of wire. I've added a little clip here that I picked up at Home Depot and an insulator that I had in a, in a junk box. Uh, so that's the antenna section. It's tied in here with another clip, again, from uh, Home Depot with a little saddle blank bracket and I've used a zip tie here uh, to do the strain relief. It's hooked up to the antenna side of the transformer. On the back side, we've got a PL259 and a ground. On your ground, uh, you will add a counterpoise, okay? Some people say you need a counterpoise, others say you do not. For me, it worked really, really well. The length on this is 30 feet. Now, I haven't quite finished this section yet here. I've got a little bit of a, a loop back so I can tie it back. What I am gonna do here is I'm gonna add a ground clamp and uh, if I get a chance that I'm in an area where I can use a, uh, a grounding rod, uh, then I will actually ground that end. But it's very important that you ground uh, the antenna, at least uh, ground your radio, okay? Uh, there's also a couple of other little things that I'm gonna show you here in a second, but let's take off the screws so you can see how this is done inside. All right, last screw here. And uh, it's gonna stay with me right at the end. All right, we pull that off and here you go. Here's the inside of it. It's a little toroid coil with some uh, uh, number um, 16 gauge wire, uh, solid core wrapped around it. And there's all kinds of plans. We'll link, put a link in there and where you can find a plan. And we'll also put in a parts list here uh, to um, uh, the parts so that you can uh, uh, build one of these for yourself. A couple of little things that I'm going to change here on uh, this uh, screw here. I've got the wire wrapped around. I've noticed it gets loose once in a while. Uh, so when I get back uh, to my uh, home uh, shop here, I'm going to put on a little eyelet and put a double nut on there so it stays uh, connected so it doesn't get loose. And I'm going to do the same thing here on the ground connection because I've noticed that, uh, well, it's already loose. So we're going to tighten that up after, but uh, before we put it on the air. So there you go, a nine to one Unum. Uh, again, the 3D printed case. I don't have a link to that one. A friend of mine found it on the web and unfortunately I never got the address from him. Uh, we did make the little sticker so that you always know uh, where things go. And uh, the only thing that I will mention about this is it's not entirely weather sealed, okay? Uh, but a little bit of silicone on there and a little bit of um, post, uh, post work here will make that quite uh, weather sealed and that can stay up for an awful long time. For me, I want to use it as uh, well, I will weather seal it, but I do want to use it as a, um, as a portable antenna uh, for field work. All right, so again, I'm going to pop a link here to the different lengths of wire that you can try, and it's going to give you an idea of the SWR curve. Now, remember, the SWR curve, don't hold that as gospel. It is going to vary depending on what's around you. All right, metal objects, uh, how high up you have it in the trees, uh, ground conditions, all kinds of different things. But it's going to give you an idea of what the different lengths will do. Again, 124 foot 6 inches for this one, 30 feet for that one, is what I use. Uh, if you're in a shorter or a smaller lot and you've got uh, uh, different things, check out the different links here below. Um, the other thing I'm going to mention is it's not really critical that this be a straight line. Okay, I've, I've mounted it into an arc. I've mounted it as, a, as an inverted V. As a matter of fact, that's what we're going to be playing with today when I get this up in the trees. And I've mounted it as a sloper straight across. I've mounted it as an inverted L. Um, and, and it works. It works really, really well. 
you want to get it up in the air at least 15 feet okay the higher the better in this particular case here it's going to be an inverted V and it's going to go from about uh, 10 feet off the ground and it's going to go up uh, into the trees at about 30 feet and then come back down and it's going to stop at about 20 is what the configuration here is and you'll see that in a few moments um, you'll also uh, the uh, counterpoise it does not necessarily have to be uh, directly uh, uh, away from the uh, radiator it can come off at an angle okay but it can't come in underneath same thing with your coax your coax has to come off at an angle it can't go underneath the antenna otherwise you're going to have all kinds of problems so Okay, so let's talk about the coax. I'm going to use RG, um, actually this is an old chunk of RG8, still in very good shape, 52 ohm coax, okay. Um, you need a minimum of 30 feet on the main lead. All right, after that, you're going to have to have an, a line isolator. So this is a uh, uh, this is an antenna choke uh, made with ferrite beads. And this is actually, uh, well, something that you can make yourself, but I bought it at a ham fest uh, from a company called Maple Leaf Communications. And it was about uh, 40 bucks, but I use these all the time. Uh, you can also make your own. You can make what's called an ugly ballon, and you can look that up on YouTube. There's all kinds of websites there that'll show you how to make one of those but essentially it is a coil of wire okay it's a coil of coax you need about 17 to 21 feet of coax uh, and coil that up eight to uh, six inches in diameter I actually made one uh, when I was testing this antenna because I didn't have this with me but uh, that worked all right so from the uh, choke here uh, you will uh, take another coax and uh, this really doesn't matter how long it is in this case here I've got uh, 50 or er, uh, 20 feet and that's going to go to your rig so that's the setup you need that choke in there, okay? Uh, if you're not comfortable making your own ballon and you're not comfortable making your own choke, uh, good news, uh, LDG has just come out with a, a nine to one on them, okay? So that uh, is exactly the same thing here. It's in a different case. And they've also come out with a small choke um, it's a one-to-one -one, uh, on them. So it's just basically an RF choke and you can uh, put that together. I'm not exactly sure what the cost is, but uh, you know, a few dollars and uh, you don't have to worry about making it yourself. Um, put up a link here to the parts list. Uh, this particular one here will handle about 200 watts. All right, so let's get it up in the trees and uh, let's check the SWR and see if we can make a couple of contacts. The unum is about 15 feet high. You see the main antenna going off to the right and the counterpoise to the left going up over this tree here and uh, over the limb. That's about 30 feet up in the air. And uh, we come back down. There's the insulator. That one's at about 20 feet off the ground. And uh, that wire goes off uh, to a tree in the background. So that's the setup. All right, got my little GoPro. Got my uh, antenna analyzer so I can give you a shot of the screen. Uh, let's just select uh, the uh, frequency ranges here and let's see where we're at. Uh, well, we're at 4.8 on the uh, 160 meter band, uh, 2.1 on the 40 meter band. Uh, we've got uh, 1.32 on 20 meters, 1.7 on the uh, uh, 15 meter band and 1.9 on the um, um, sorry, 10 meter band. So let me just uh, double check the frequency here and uh, let's change uh, the frequency for this one. Frequency, all right, let's go to uh, 03750. Uh, that is for the 80 meter band and uh, 1.9 to 1 on 80 meters. So uh, 80 through um, 80 through 10, uh, quite usable. Uh, let's get out of that and uh, hold that. Go back to the normal here and we're gonna just check one more frequency. Uh, we'll just do a quick setting here. Number two, set the frequency. Uh, let's take a peek at zero one, or five zero one two five and we'll hit select and uh, we'll do an SWR on it. And uh, let's see here, 2.2 on the 50 meter band at the calling frequency. So everything except for 160 meters you can use with uh, a built-in tuner on most rigs. Uh, you'll need an outboard tuner 
with a little bit more range uh, for the uh, 180 meter band. Now, all that said, I have installed this antenna when I was building it and testing it. I did install it in a different configuration and I managed to get the SWR on 160 meters below three to one. So you'd be able to use it there. So play around with your installation and see what you can do. Don't forget there's different lengths of wire that you can try. You can, if you have a little bit more uh, room, you can play with the uh, longer wire. And of course, if you uh, don't have the room, there's all kinds of shorter links there that you can play around with so experiment let's go make some contacts and see how it works uh, this is on the ontario amateur radio service net looking for check-in victor echo 3 bravo foxtrot stroke portable hey uh, victor echo 3 uh, bravo foxtrot uh, portable uh, rob the direct email here uh, good morning, Rob. Uh, this is Dennis, uh, Delta Echo Nancy, India Sierra. And just testing out a new antenna here, a sloper on 80 meters. And uh, well, the band's closing up, but uh, summertime conditions. Thanks for taking my check in. I uh, just want to add a bean to the pot. Over. Okay, yeah, I think he was, uh, you guys were doubling there. Uh, uh, the E3 Bravo Foxtrot. Uh, any, anything for Rob on the net? Uh... No, sorry, we doubled. Uh, name is Dennis, Delta Echo, Nancy, India, Sierra, operating portable in Eganville, uh, running on a sloper antenna, and uh, the band is closing up. It's summer conditions, but just want to give you a bean for the pot. Over. Yeah, he's, uh, okay, good stuff. Yeah, he's in Eganville, uh, running a portable on a sloper antenna, uh, Rob, uh, and uh, I, uh, I didn't quite catch the name there. Go ahead again. Yeah, name is Dennis, Dennis, Delta Echo, Nancy, India, Sierra, over. Oh, Roger, okay, Dennis, yeah, the name is Dennis, and uh, he, he just came up in, uh, in signal strength there. Uh, over to you, Rob. Okay, thanks a lot, Jerry, appreciate it. And uh, Dennis, thanks for uh, for checking in. Sorry, I, I can't copy. I, I copied just the tail end of that last transmission there a bit, but uh, uh, the band is not uh, very good to me, and, uh, and my noise level's up about S7, so you just around, uh, around that uh, for as far as signal is concerned. Thanks for checking in, Dennis. Uh, seven three. All right, 73, you're about a 5-3, five, 5-3 three, five, three with me. My noise level right now about an S1. 73. Thanks a lot, Jerry. Okay, yeah, he said you're about a, a S7 there, 5, five and 7, so his, uh, he only has a S1 noise level, so <laughs> a little better than you are. He was copying you just fine. Okay, 7-3, ZE Thrag, you well. That appreciate the, uh, the relay there, Jerry. Well, let's tune up here on uh, 40 meters. Absolutely no problem. There's a net going on here. We'll check into it. Anyhow, hey, that concludes the Can Am net for the 8th of July. The net will help be held again tomorrow morning, and uh, VA3AG Aldo and Curtis Ontario will be your net control. So be sure and come back and. Uh, Check in with uh, Joe with uh, Aldo tomorrow, and hopefully uh, things will be a little bit calmer, and we'll not have as much doubling as we did today. And with that, we'll return the frequency to its normal amateur radio use, whatever that might be these days, with the crappy propagation. And V3 KII is clear. V3 KII, V3 KII. Any copy on V3 Bravo Foxtrot? Over, over. Yeah, V3 Bravo Foxtrot. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. I think it's Don there in Ottawa, if I remember correctly. I'm, I'm running from memory here, and that's a dangerous thing these days. Name here is Dennis. I'm also from Ottawa, but I'm located in Eganville, Ontario, uh, testing a new antenna here and actually recording this for YouTube, Don, uh, if that's okay. Uh, wondering what my signal is like in Ottawa today, but 125 kilometers uh, to the southeast of me. Okay, Dennis. Uh, yeah, okay. I missed where you said you were today. Yeah, I recognize the call. Okay, but uh, I missed where you said you were working, where you were, uh, had the uh, station today. Yeah, I'm portable at the campground here, set up uh, underneath the gazebo in the uh, sunny outdoors, and uh, I'm near the town of Eganville, about 40 kilometers from the eastern edge of uh, Algonquin Park. Over. Yeah, okay, uh, Eganville. Yeah, okay, we got it that time, Dennis. Well, it's... Uh, yeah, considering the distance we're at uh, the, and the, the 40 meter band, you're about a 5.5 five, five to 5.6. A bit of QSP, but it sounds pretty good, Dennis. 
All right, thanks very much, Don. Good to hear you this morning. Nice net. I was listening in here. Like I said, I'm just recording a little video here from my YouTube channel, and uh, uh, the antenna today is a, a long wire, um, 124 foot long long wire with a nine to one on them, and I'm running on my little 991 Alpha here at the picnic table. So uh, uh, good to hear you. Short propagation on 40, but uh, you've got a nice signal here. You're running anywhere from uh, uh, five five to five nine uh, as the band goes up and down. That whole transmission down. Oh, pardon me. Foot, uh, slipping off the switch because that whole transmission was uh, was five nine plus about five. Well, very good. Well, thanks, Don, and uh, appreciate the bean in the pot, and we'll let you get on with your day. And uh, uh, thanks for running the net. Uh, over. Okay, LJ. Okay, Dennis. Uh, anybody else copy, Dennis? Yeah. Okay, LJ. I do. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, yeah. Ve three. Uh... Uh, Bravo Fox from K8 Lima, Juliet. Good morning, uh, Dennis. Name here is Bob. I'm located near Columbus, Ohio. And I got a lot of noise here, but you're uh, averaging about a 5 and 7 here. Uh, pretty good copy, Dennis. Uh, over. All right, very good, Bob. Thanks very much. It's been a long time since we've chatted. Uh, I haven't checked into the net uh, since uh, well uh, in the early parts of the winter. So uh, thanks for the nice signal report. Uh, on that last transmission, you were very, very clear. Uh, I've got a little bit of attenuation on on the radio here. So you were but an S3, uh, but uh, it was uh, definitely much closer to an S7 if I didn't have the attenuation on. Over. Okay, well, thanks for the report, uh, Dennis. Your antenna doing a pretty good job with the 90, 991A. That's a, a nice little rig. Um, I never used one before except field day a couple of weeks ago where I operated CW only with one other guy and he brought his rig. And so uh, that was my introduction to that. So anyway, uh, nice make your acquaintance and uh, hope to hear you again. Um, the BE3 uh, Bravo Fox from K8 Lima Julia 73 and uh, you can turn it on. All right, K8 uh, Lima Juliet uh, VE3 Bravo Foxtrot. Thanks very much, Bob, and uh, you have yourself a wonderful day. And uh, I'll, I'm going to be QRT here. And uh, uh, thanks, Don, again for the uh, report. And we'll look for you further down the log, as they say, VE3 KII, VE3 BF. Okay, Dennis, we'll take care and sounding good. And uh, well, enjoy. I'm not sure how long you're going to be there, but check in again if you can and enjoy the. Uh the weather while you got it there looks like a fairly good week gonna be a couple of hot days starting tomorrow but uh looks like a pretty good week Dennis. It look, it's looking pretty good, uh, Don. It certainly is. Uh, thanks again for the QSO. We'll send you a link to the little video, and you can have a chuckle and see what you sound like on the air there. Hi, hi. Uh, 73 to you, sir. Enjoy the day and the week. Uh, VE3KII V3BF73. Yeah, okay, Dennis. We'll take care. Enjoy the outdoors there, and uh, we'll talk to you again. The 3 uh, Bravo Fox Portable, the 3 ki 73 Dennis. Oh, uh, 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 big signal here in Eganville, Aldo. Thanks very much uh, for the nice signal report. Uh, you're uh, solid 5.9 here if I didn't have the attenuator on. So, uh, fantastic job, sir. Seventy-three V three BF. Well, pretty good conditions here. Um, just give you an idea. I do have a little bit of attenuation on here, so we'll turn on the uh, uh, the preamp, and uh, you can see the difference. I like it without the noise personally, so we'll keep that off and let's go take a peek here at the uh, twenty meter band. See if we can make a contact there. Well, this band's sounding pretty quiet. Let's see here. We'll tune up uh, right around here. Not a whole lot going on. I'll get on right on a, on a specific frequency here. And let's give it a tuning. No problem. All right, let's give a call out for CQ. Hello, CQ, CQ, CQ 20 meters, CQ 20 meters. This is Victor Echo 3 Bravo Foxtrot. Victor Echo 3 Bravo Foxtrot, stroke portable, testing a new antenna, looking for a contact. 
Hello CQ, CQ20, CQ20, any station anywhere, Victor Echo 3, Bravo, Foxtrot, Stroke Portable, calling CQ and standing by. Victor Echo 3 station, I believe, Kilo Alpha 1, Zulu, Mike Tango, that's an EK, it was the EK. Uh, Kilo Alpha 1, uh, Zulu Mike Alpha, or Zulu Mike Tango, not 100% sure. Uh, this is Victor Echo 3, Bravo Foxtrot, over, over. Yeah, Roger, it's Tango, uh, Zulu Mike Tango, Coast of Maine, Roger. Now, very good. Uh, very good morning to you, sir. Uh, just testing out a new antenna here. It's a, uh, a random wire uh, sloper uh, up at about uh, 30 feet at its apex. And uh, just wondering how I'm doing here. Operating portable at a campground. Over. Yeah, very good. I have you uh, 5 and 9, 5 and 8, and 5 and 9 on the go. So, yeah, no problem whatsoever. Audio's okay, Roger. All right, very good. Well, I've got, there must be a little bit of a one-way skip here. I'm just turning on a preamp. I've got you at about a 5.3 Q5 copy and just uh, turned off my, or turned on my preamp here. Uh, the needle on this particular uh, radio is a little bit stingy sometimes, but uh, I think uh, we'll see what we've got here now that I turned off the attenuation over. Yeah, very good. Yeah, well, I got you off the back of the beam, so don't worry about that, but you call again. Uh... So I believe it was Victor Echo 3, but uh, give me the rest of it, though. Yeah, it's Victor Echo 3, Bravo Foxtrot, uh, Bravo Foxtrot. My name is Dennis, Delta Echo, Nancy, India, Sierra. I'm located uh, about, 100 and, uh, about 100 miles uh, uh, to the northwest of the capital city of Ottawa in the province of Ontario. Over. Yeah, very good. Well, then, no kick there on the back side of the beam. You're doing fine. The handle here, Dennis, is Ed, Echo Delta, and I'm in a small sign room so called Sears Port, Sears Port, Maine, Roger. Roger, Roger on Searsport, Maine. Very good, Ed. Well, I'm glad to meet you today. Thanks for the contact. I'm actually recording this uh, for a little YouTube video. I have a little YouTube channel, and I try to put... Uh, uh, little videos together on different antennas that I've uh, I've come up with or dreamed up and uh, I do little product reviews so uh, I hope you don't mind me recording this and uh, I thank you very much for the contact over I'll go right ahead Dennis very good now uh, so uh, glad I was able to pick you up and I'll say 73s for now from Kilo Alpha 1 Zulu Mike Tango you'll have no problem convincing people it's working take care bye bye all right, very good, Ed. Thanks very much. And I don't know if I'm still off the back of the beam, but you're a solid S9 now. Thanks very much. 73, sir. Uh, Kilo Alpha 1, Zulu Mike Tango, Victor Echo 3, Bravo Foxtrot Portable. There you go, three different contacts on three different bands. Uh, 80 meters uh, was a, a bit of a tough one, but uh, it is 1120 in the summertime and we're at the bottom of the solar cycle, so I'm pretty pleased with that one. Uh, 40 meters, uh, good contact there, short skip, uh, only 125 kilometer distance. And then we got the one in Ohio too, so that was uh, quite a bit further. So uh, that seemed to work all right. And then of course the uh, 20 meter contact into Maine off the back side of that beam. So I'm pretty pleased with that, uh, considering all the band conditions. Last night, four o'clock, or yesterday afternoon, four o'clock, uh, Europe was booming in at 20 over nine, but I didn't have the camera rolling. So can't count that, but it's true, it did happen. $35 investment, pretty good deal. Play around with it, play around with different wires, uh, different lengths of wire. Again, I'll pop the link of the chart down below. And the show notes, if you have any questions, send me a comment. If you like the videos, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, well, give me a thumbs down. That's okay, I got thick skin, but do me a favor. Write me a comment, let me know what you didn't like about the video, and that way I can make the videos better uh, for the next one. I'm Victor Echo 3 Bravo Foxtrot, reminding you to subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now, 73.